Elizabeth, I am the Global Head of Diversity and Inclusion at the FT. Um, and prior to that, I was at Channel 4, where I spent five years of my career um, educating, inspiring, finding new talent um, across the country to bring them into Channel 4 and develop them. My background is diversity, um, I spent a lot of my time working with new talent and developing them. Um, and I then set up my own company, consultancy, and went on to work for ITN, where I worked with the CEO and the exec team to set, to set diversity targets. Um, and one of my biggest achievements at ITN was really uh, being one of the first media companies to publish the ethnicity pay gap. Um, just a bit about me, where it started with was right here, so it's nice to be here on, on home soil, down the road on the Broadwater Farm Estate. So shout out to Broadwater Farm. Um, it's good to be here, and I guess the odds were stacked against me, you know, coming from Broadwater Farm, but when you look at the farm, actually, there's been a lot of talent that's come out of it. I guess what I thought of my own level, a lot of work experience in the BBC, um, and I just asked for help, and I asked for support. But leaving university and boarding, I realised that there were a number of barriers for me to enter into this hugely competitive industry. And the first one was the network barrier. So there was no one that I knew that came from my background or from my neighbourhood that could help me get in. Because this industry is very much about who you know, right? Secondly, it was the information barrier. Again, I don't feel like I was given the right information about how to get in, what, what, what I would have to do to get into certain roles if I was getting into production. I didn't know that 90% of the time I would be a freelancer and I would have to manage my own time and my own budget. And the third one was the financial barrier. Because to work in this industry, when I started out, you very much had to work for free and you got some work experience and that's exactly what I did. But um, that barrier for the financial side was tough because I couldn't work for free, I couldn't work or live off the bank of mum and dad. So I had to look at how I could use my skills and transfer them somewhere else. So I did that and I worked for a media communications charity and as I said, China Hall came on here, I did radio PR and I've just worked hard. Whatever I've done, I've worked hard at it. And so people look at me, sometimes I'm the, the only black woman or black person around the, the boardroom at the Financial Times. And people think, how did that girl from Tottenham get here? And it's hard work. And um, I've just worked hard at everything that I've done. So that's enough about me. Because, um, like I said, today's not about me. We've got an amazing panel here. And today, so I'm just going to start right over at the end here, to my right with Kojo. If you could just introduce yourself and tell me a little bit and I was here about what you do and your career journey. Uh, uh, Coach, I'm a comedian. Um, what else do I do? A whole bunch of stuff. Not in 20 minutes. But uh, I, I run um, the Black Magical Awards as well, which honors um, black men and women um, for their um, achievements in entertainment business and um, community as well. Um, and yeah, I've just been in entertainment for 20 years. Some of you may have recently seen me on Women's Black Talent. Um, doing my thing up there, and uh, life is good. <laughs> Hi everybody, um, my name is Louise Brenjensa, and I'm the CEO and founder of Ships. And for those who don't know, Ships is a leading ticketing and discovery platform for urban culture events. So tonight, if you're looking for a really cool hip hop or Afro beats night, check out ships.com, good fun. Um, uh, I will probably uh, delve deeper into my experience, sort of background, as you kind of go through the questions. Um, but I've always had a passion for music and events. And so when I look back at my life, I can see how all the dots have added up to this moment. Like, this is what I actually envisaged for when I was a child, when I'd be working with my passion in events. So I'm very fortunate to be here, and I'd love to tell you a bit more about it when we get through the questions. Thank you, Louise. I'm going to ask you to hold on to that mic and just move over here. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ade Shegon Ade Oshon Jr. I'm a Nigerian, proud African. <laughs> so, um, I came to this country 14 years ago. I'm going to make this short, as short as possible. I'm going to run out of time. Um, I came here to study um, marketing, first degree. I uh, went on to do my second degree in MBA marketing. But the um, thing is, when I came here, I didn't I was, I was 19, so trying to um, uh, find out my career path and, you know, um, what to do. Because my dad always wanted, to, wanted me to be an accountant. Um, but I wasn't sure that was what I wanted. So, um, got to this country, started doing house parties, reunions, and stuff with 
friends from back home that were living here already. And um, I just bumped into the promotions. I didn't even know what a promoter was at the time, you know. And um, I had threw a big house party and you know the police came and they were like I am gonna hold you right there because yeah. I don't want you to reveal too many yeah, nuggets okay, too okay. soon. Uh, um, so yeah, you okay, touched on the big vision already. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, um I'm the CEO of Spade Entertainment Limited. We do club nights, tours, concerts, you know, um we do shows all over all over the world. I'm also the co-founder of Afro Nation. Yeah, I'm proud to go on the center. They're going to go, you know, amazing, and we're going to America next year, sometime in March. So yeah, um, that's it for now. If you have any more questions, brilliant. Yeah, save some of those nuggets for a minute. Go, Eddie. Yeah. Um, hi guys. My name is Eddie. Um, I'm a Congolese man, um, but I like to see myself as a Pan African. I believe that you know, I don't see no borders. Before we got colonized, there was no borders in Africa. So that's what I like to see, and that's that's what I've used to carve my way throughout my career. Uh, be able to you know transition for uh, the Ghanaian, Nigerian, South African communities, the Bobby community, and then it's played well in my career. Um, I was born in Congo, I came at the age of eight, and um, my dad wanted me to go to university so I can become a doctor, lawyer, and accountant. We've all heard the stories, um, but God used me to open his eyes and many other uh, parents' eyes in our community that you don't need to be a doctor, lawyer, and accountant to impact the world. Um, so I've been given the spirit of laughter uh, from God and I believe that um, it's, used, it's been used to open many, many careers um, and many, many doors. So, uh, and I recently co-founded um, a networking, a Black African networking uh, brand called the Panathonic, which we recently just done in London not too long ago as well. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I do. And I love stand-up. Thanks to Koja. <laughs> Thank you. Hi everyone, how's everybody? The response is, are you okay? Yeah. My name is Ernest Ousu and um, I'm a pastor and I'm a pilot. I was born in Ghana, raised in Ghana, grew up in Ghana. I came here when I was 22 and um, worked my way up, paid my own fees and became a pilot. I'm currently the pastor for Victory Center International, which I pastor. Uh, I don't know whether to say full-time or part-time. <laughs> and I also fly planes full-time. That's us. Thank you so much. And then you hold... um, it's a long journey, but um, let me make it short. I was born in Ghana to a very poor family. Uh, my dad and mom were Pearson farmers. We live in a village in the eastern region called Paben. Uh, it was really hard growing up. We suffered a lot of rejections, you know, had to sell stuff to pay my fees, sell stuff to look after my junior brothers. I've got three other brothers. And um, I started preaching also at the same time when I was about 13 years old. So I went to schools and then to University of Science and Technology where I studied economics and geography. During that same time, I was, you know, preaching the gospel, telling people how God can turn people's situation around, even though He had not turned mine around. And um, I became a symbol of motivation. People, let me put it this way: I think during all my school days, I was a symbol of ridicule because of how I suffered. I went to uni with only two trousers, one shirt, one shoe. No cup, no plate, no spoon, no nothing. And you know, my roommates you know, gave me all sorts of names. But I had this thing in me that, you know, I knew that there was a higher calling. I wanted to be a pilot. So when I came to UK, you know, on my own, still French, I heard British Airways were doing this future pilots program. So I filled a form, I went for an interview, I failed. Second time the same year, which was 2009, I went again to the last stage. I didn't fail, but they didn't pick me because there were over 4,000 people and I was the only black. So, you know, I came home again. Went for the third time, I didn't go through. It wasn't because I wasn't making it. I made the grades they wanted. I passed all the exams. I did the interview. I scored good, but 
simply wasn't picked. It wasn't picked. So I went online, figured out another way to become a pilot. And I realized that I had to pay my own fees. And in 2009, the fees was about 96,000 pounds. So I, I, I started working in this wholesale shop just by the first coast near Tottenham Hill. It's called Abra Wholesale. My manager was called Rat. He encouraged me a lot. I worked seven days a week. Still preaching up and down. Paid my fees gradually, systematically, and was still looking after my siblings back home and my parents at the same time. I want to say this to you before I continue. There is nothing you cannot do. Gonna make it happen. You see, what people say about you will never destroy you. But what you say about yourself will destroy you. So, eventually, putting everything together, I graduated from Oxford as a pilot in 2014. Wow. And, uh, it's kind of difficult to answer your question. That's a very good answer. Don't you agree? A very good answer. Thank you so much. Um, so you touched on um, challenges and rejection. Um, and being in the media industry, I, I felt like I had to kick down a lot of doors um, in order to, to get my foot in. And whilst trying to kick down those doors in, in, within the community, you always hear a lot of people saying, oh, why are you letting your child do media, let them do nursing or something where they can easily get a job? And, you know, persistence is definitely key in having to put your mind to things and work hard. But touching on your point around challenges, I'm going to come to you, Kojo because more, more recently we saw you on um, Britain's Got Talent. Um, a lot of us have followed you for many years beforehand. We love coming to your shows. Um, we saw you as that role model already. You know, you were a success to us already. But there was a, a pivotal moment on that stage, I think, during Britain's Got Talent, where you were quite emotional. You mean I was crying? <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. Um, so, so let's talk about some of the, the challenges in your, your career journey and, and what's it looking like now for you? I think, I think...